Hey, what's happening, everyone? Corey here with the Long Island Cross Journal. I got a, a special guest, head coach, Melissa Lehman from Rutgers. How you doing, coach? I'm doing great, Corey. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's really nice to have you here on uh, on our little Zoom interview. It's uh, it's an interesting time. I know with the season getting canceled, there's it's a new normal for everyone. You know, people involved in the high school game. You know, coaches and players involved in the college game. How are you kind of adjusting to? Uh, the change, kind of the change of the schedule um, with everything being canceled. Yeah, so it's it's a new normal for everyone. And uh, I think this actually comes at a, a good time. I mean, nobody ever wants their season canceled and sports kind of taken away, obviously. Um, but there's a lot going on in this country that, um, you know, I think we all got to put things in perspective. And for me, with this program, um, just having been in its first year, it's been a really great time for me to reflect back on the season, things that we did well, finding the the positives and the strength in what we were able to build in just, you know, not even a, a full calendar year. And mm -hmm. so that's been taking a lot of our time and still trying to stay connected with the girls. I think that's the biggest thing and, and really important to us. And um, when, when we think about our program, it's about the family and the bond that we have. So as much as possible, trying to keep normalcy in the lives of our athletes and stay connected. Yeah, you, you know, your team specifically, like, you're trying to, you're trying to get things going and, um, you know, you you adopt a, a group of girls here and you get, you get right into it with, you know, being a part of one of the more difficult conferences in the country, which you were just getting into. But before that, you know, with your non-league schedule, playing some, some incredible programs and you guys got off to a hot start. What, what were some positive takeaways that you noticed right off the bat um, from, from the 2020 season? Well, from what we've preached from day one is come to practice ready to compete. And I think that's how we started the 2020 season. We were ready to go. We were hungry to get out there on the field and itching to just compete against somebody else um, and show what we were made of. I think we talked a lot about trying to define who we are as a program and what um, you know, getting excited to, to show the world what Rutgers lacrosse was all about. And I saw a lot of resiliency and fight in the first four games that we had that we were able to get out to that hot start, um, you know, with four wins. And they were wins all different ways, which is, I think for, for a team, it, it's good to learn from all different scenarios. So, um, you know, I love the fight that I saw from the team from, from the get-go. It's fantastic. You, you mentioned compete. I'd like to go back a little bit because you as a player, I would consider you a competitor, um, especially with what you you did and, and what your team uh, accomplished during your time at Penn. Can you, can you not kind of reflect on that experience and how it's kind of shaped you um, as, a, as a college coach? Yeah. I mean, my, my college experience was incredible. You know, I was recruited to a program at Penn that had not really seen a ton of success in about 20 years. And so we bought into a vision that our head coach, Karen Corbett, had that the program can compete at a high level in one of the toughest conferences at the time being in the Ivy League. And, you know, it was no easy feat, but um, really bringing that competitive mindset, I think, to everything we did. Um, our coach instilled the fact that you had to have the championship standards and mindset in all that you did. So not just on the lacrosse field, it was in academics and it wasn't just on game day, it was behind the scenes. And um, I think for us, it was the hard work. It was the hours that we put in and that goes to the preparation piece. I think that really allowed us to take the jump to the, the highest level possible competing in the final four in a national championship. And so, you know, really putting in the time um, of, of your skills and doing it and fighting for every single aspect of, of, you know, college athletics, you know, mm -hmm. fighting for that extra, you know, burst on a, on a hundred yard sprint is going to allow you to have that in the tank um, and doing it with your sisters out there, your family on the line. So I learned so much from my experience at Penn and it was not something that happened overnight. And that's something, you know, you have to be willing to put in the time without maybe seeing results right away. Um, mm -hmm. But that's how you build a culture that can really sustain itself. Yeah, I, that's that's so true. And the development and the rise of the program, just just witnessing it was so evident. And I think one of the things that stood out, um, you know, just about just about Penn women's lacrosse is like the leadership that um, that was represented. And for you, like personally, like how 
How did you go about developing as a leader during your time playing collegiately at one of the highest levels um, in the Ivy League under Karen? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, leadership can take so many different forms. And I think that what I really learned in developing as I was a player and then even into a coach, you have to really have that end goal in mind and something you're chasing for, whether it's just we want to compete like what is the goal for this program that can we can really lock onto and have the passion and everything you do and all the conversations that you have with people involved in that team you have to be willing to have those conversations and inspire others so i think that's one of the biggest things as a leader i wouldn't say you know i was the most vocal leader as a player but i was determined and i think was able to develop the connections with all of my teammates that we wanted to do it together. Mm -hmm. And that's how we were going to accomplish our goals and the vision that we had for the program. It's really about doing it together. And that's really what I'm doing um, with my program now at Rutgers. And it's really exciting. That's awesome. And, uh, you know, you transitioned from being, uh, you know, a college player to becoming a college coach. Did you go right into coaching and assisting at Penn? Was that your first coaching stop? My my first coaching job actually was at Brown. So I stayed in the league, right. um, in the Ivy League, then went up to Providence for a year before I went back to Penn. And what was your experience like coaching at the place that you uh, you played at? Unbelievable. Um, I think that anytime you get an opportunity to coach at your alma mater, I mean, you innately have – the pride in mm -hmm. the university you understand the school spirit and that's really every day i remember walking to work because i lived in the city and i would just walk into um, walk towards franklin field and what an incredible venue to be playing at at an, a prestigious university so um, i think it just it, it was a privilege it was an honor and that just made it that much more rewarding, having been in those athletes' shoes, knowing what an incredible experience they could have and to be able to provide that um, at a place that I felt passionately about was really incredible. At what point did you kind of know like, you know, hey, you know, I've, I've learned so much here, you know, during my experience coaching at Brown and then coaching at Penn and you've seen success and you've helped so many players kind of you know, fulfill their goals and, and work towards teams goals? Like, like, at what point did you say, like, I want to, I want to kind of build this and create this on my own? Yeah, uh, that's a great question. You know, I think that any coach has that innate competitiveness inside them, and they love challenges. And so, I mean, I enjoyed every year that I had spent at, um, as an assistant coach and associate head coach and learning so much from um, my other coaches I worked with, with Karen and Kerry, who was also a head coach. And so I felt just so prepared for that next step mm -hmm. in my career. And the biggest thing for me when I thought about moving on from a, a place where we competed at a high level and had consistent success was I needed to feel connected to that program. I needed to feel the belief that I could really create something special. Mm -hmm. And a, a, school and a university that you know i deep down could get behind and that's what i found you know um in Rutgers. and from the first day that i stepped on campus and and started talking with the administrators and other coaches i just felt that connection um it is my home state of new jersey so i hmm. think that in and of itself just really um you know, got, got to me and, and my pride came out immediately for what we can accomplish as the State University of New Jersey. Yeah, that's, that's fantastic. And, uh, you know, you, you're going from, from the Ivy League to the Big Ten. So it's like, it's, it's not as if you're jumping, you know, into a conference that doesn't have teams that have competed or won national championships and, mm -hmm. you know, played at a super high level. So would you feel as though um, you, you were also prepared, not just because of Karen's guidance, but also maybe because of the competition level and the compete level that you experienced at Penn as well? Absolutely. I mean, um, where I was previously, we were playing a, a schedule that not just had our league, but we were playing Big Ten opponents regularly mm -hmm. and ACC foes. So, um, you know, being able to have competed against them with our non-conference schedule and scouting against them and, you um, 
that prepared me. Um, and I felt confident, you know, jumping in. That's what I wanted. I wanted yeah. to be able to compete in the toughest conferences out there. And that's the challenge that I crave as a coach. Um, that's who I was as an athlete, always willing to compete against the best. Um, and that's how you measure your success. And you just, you know, always have something to learn and grow and strive for. And mm -hmm. so um, it, I think coming into this role, you know, I didn't even get to a Big Ten competition this year yet, but <laughs> right it was there. exciting. You know, we were just about to play Maryland, um, but our team was, was getting really excited for that conference schedule. And um, I, I just, you know, can't wait to continue to grow with this program and, and get them competing at that high national level. Yeah. I mean, like, not just any coach craves that, obviously. Um, also, not just any player craves that. So for you, you got to find the right player. What's maybe one thing that stands out for you in a recruit that's like could be tangible or intangible where it's like, I need that and that girl is going to help me win. Yeah. It's the grittiness. That's the X factor. In my opinion, how hard are you willing to fight when you might not get results immediately? You know, it's that grit to go after a ground ball, to not give up on your skills. Um, and that relentless pursuit of, you know, getting better and doing things for the, for the good of the team. And so um, I think it's definitely that, that grittiness, that Jersey grit is what we're looking for out there um, because I think that just propels you and, and, and pushes any athlete when they have that inner drive. Um, they can compete with anyone, you know, if they really put their mind to it. Yeah, that's fantastic. Um, you probably read Angela Duckworth's book, right, mm -hmm. Grit? That's a good I one. Know. Yeah, she, I think she, she's a teacher at Penn, right? Yep. Yeah, yep. and you, she you talks good. about the the grit being uh, about passion and your resiliency, sure. and and adding to that, and that's just so powerful, you know. Yeah. And and you have to have the passion, yeah, to go after whatever it is, even if it's far fetched, you know. In at, immediately, if you have that passion and that relentless spirit, you can really accomplish whatever you set, you know, your mind to. So. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, yeah, so let's talk real quick. We have a couple minutes left here. Just mm -hmm. the experience going back to where you played and coached for so long. Um, you know, at Penn, you were, you went. You know, you, your team played at Franklin Field and had um, what seemed like a pretty pretty incredible game. I'm sure with some experience. What was that like for you, just uh, overall? So actually, something happened with the lights in Franklin Field, and we had to play in Penn Park. Oh. So, wow. It was actually an interesting experience. Obviously, Penn Park is the fields right behind the stadium, and we had played a number of games there. Um, it was emotional on a, a lot of levels. You know, that's basically where I spent most of my playing and coaching career um, in the city of Philadelphia. Um, but I mean, nothing but the utmost respect and gratitude for all that that community gave to me and. Um, that coaching staff taught me and all the experiences, but it was, it was one of the most exciting games of the season. It was a battle down there <laughs> in Philadelphia. Um, you know, I was so proud of my team and the fight. I mean, we were fast and, you know, I definitely, when we've gone back and, and reflected on the season, that's one of the games that they just were so proud of, um, how they competed together mm -hmm. as a group. And so, um, a, a great experience. Um, you know, we were tied at probably about 10 minutes left, which is so exciting. And it, it was the X's and O's time out here, time out there, <laughs> like strategic chess match going on between the staffs, which was pretty fun. Um, but yeah, definitely a, a very special experience though. Yeah. It had to be interesting playing at Penn Park. It's like, when you're in Franklin, you're kind of contained. You can't see kind of like outside the stadium, but when you're down there, it's like you see the city where you live for so long and you ran the streets and then you see, you know, that stadium you spent so many hours probably running up and down and mm -hmm. running inside of, which is, uh, which I can only imagine is emotional, not to mention maybe some alumni that came back to come, to come see that <laughs> yeah. one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was crazy, but we were out there. We were in the, the scarlet red and <laughs> leading that and it was, it was a great game. Well, so what I find interesting, like the compete level that you um, that your team kind of exuded this year, being that it, it's not it's not really necessarily like your girls, so to speak, like you didn't recruit them. Um, so how are you able to like, 
you know, get so much out of players that maybe necessarily aren't players you knew anything about beforehand. You obviously had to get to know them. You know, you didn't recruit them. What was the approach there? Because that's pretty incredible you're able to do that. Well, you got to develop a good bond with them and, and a sense of trust. And so very early on, it was a goal of our whole coaching staff is to really get to know them as players, what made them tick and what they wanted, you know? And so I think learn very quickly on like they wanted to compete they wanted mm. to get back to the big 10 championship weekend and they were hungry and so we had to tap into that you know and, and keep that going so our practices from the get-go fast-paced a lot of energy a lot of competitive drills because if you're used to doing that that's going to translate on game day and I think that they just enjoyed it so much. Um, the high level that we were competing at day in and day out, having fun with music playing and, mm -hmm. you know, really falling in love with, with competing. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that's kind of what we tapped into right away. Um, and it was an incredible group. These seniors were on board from day one and such a special class. I felt like we really laid a great foundation for the future together. They're a huge part of it. I'm so obviously heartbroken broken for them because mm -hmm. we were having such an incredible year um, and they poured their heart and soul into leading this program. But um, make no mistake, like they will, we will play for them in the yeah. future. Um, yeah, that's, that's great. Um, yeah. One thing I always like to leave it with is just kind of, just like a piece of advice. So there's, there's a lot of girls um, at the high school level, middle school level, aspiring to play at, at the highest level, might be committed to play at a school at a high level. And being that their season is kind of at a standstill or some, some of which are getting canceled, you know, they, there's just like uncertainty. Maybe they don't know how to approach day to day. Um, they don't know what's next. What's maybe something that you can uh, just, just kind of like offer up to them just so that way they can kind of stay on track and keep moving in that positive direction they were moving before all this happened. Yeah, I mean, I think this is something that we talk about with our team too, um, you know, and, and some advice that I would give um, is definitely set small goals for yourself and take this time, you have a lot of time by yourselves to work towards whatever goals you have. So even if it's something small throughout the day, um, you know, I wanna reach out to some of my friends I haven't talked to, mm -hmm. like whatever it is that's gonna be meaningful in your life, I think this is the time to do it. Um, lacrosse wise, especially, I think this is a time where so many players would be playing and practicing and competing. And so you have that different feel. You're, you're talking about your emotions or your strategy and it's bigger game stuff wow, what a time right now to work on your individual game and really mm -hmm. push the limits and work on things that are uncomfortable for you when no one's watching. And that's where you see people and athletes just make such a huge jump when they actually develop a lot of, or demonstrate, you know, that work ethic behind the scenes and put in a lot of time in their own individual game. That's great advice. Well, Melissa, we really appreciate your time and thank you so much for coming on. Okay. Awesome. Thanks a lot.